Yes, Guru Maharaj. And verse? Um, I'm not sure, but I think it's near the beginning. Let's go through the verses and let's see what we get. Keep going. It'll be down the page a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see, just see here. Okay, yeah, verse number 10. Okay. Panchama Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Panchama Kapilo Nama Siddhe Sankal Viputam Provacha Suraye Sankhya Tatpagrama Vinir Nayam Translation. The fifth incarnation named Lord Kabila is foremost among the perfect beings. He gave an exposition on the creative elements and metaphysics to Asuri Brahmana, for in the course of time this knowledge has had been lost. Purport. The sum total of the creative elements is 24 in all. Each and every one of them is explicitly explained in the system of Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy is generally called metaphysics by the European scholars. The etymological meaning of Sankhya is that, is that which explains very lucidly by analysis of the material energy. This was done for the first time by Lord Kapila, who is said herein to be the fifth in the line of incarnations. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunya Vari Pasyat Yade Sitarine Panchakalpa Tarubischa Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Jai Tanya Prabhuni Prananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Rindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So hmm, there are many incarnations of the Supreme Lord and they come in order Lord Kapila is considered the most perfect among beings and uh, he taught Sankhya philosophy, which is known by the Europeans as metaphysics. And it's analysis of the material elements. Now, there are different opinions. I think Kapila Dave has given us 24. Some philosophers give 16, some 20, some 25. Um, but uh, the point is that material energy consists of a combination of different elements which make up the material activities. And they are the five senses along with the mind, the five sense objects, the five working senses, uh, the, uh, let's see, Five, 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 and four. That's nineteen minus twenty. That's twenty. And sometimes we have other elements such as uh, the three 
or the eight, so the, the eight material elements or five and then two more would be intelligence and false ego along with the mind. The subtle, then you have the five gross, then you have the senses and the sense objects, and you have the working senses also. So there's a combination of 24 and all, as it says here. Sometimes they add the super soul as the 25th element, but he's not part of the material energy. Yeah. So the word sankhya means to count. And by, through the process of amalgamation of the different elements within themselves, one can reach the stage of liberation. In other words, the creation starts from subtle to gross. And as the creative elements uh, manifest themselves on the, on the gross level, first they start with false ego, then intelligence, then mind. And then, then you have the material creation starts to manifest in its gross form, in the form of the uh, ether, the sky, ethereal element. And then the ear is produced, and the sense of smell is produced. Uh, the sense of uh, the sense of hearing is produced. I'm sorry. And then from there, um, air comes, and the sense of touch produced, and the sense of aroma is produced. And then that expands into fire, and from fire, form appears, and from fire also uh, we get the the element of light. And then from that we have the next one is the water. Water is taste. And then the tongue appears. And then the last is smell, the nose, and aroma. So these are the elements along with the objects of their senses and the sense object and the senses which pick up these particular elements. So the idea of liberation based on Sankhya is to amalgamate the gross back into the itself and then go all the way back into the subtle and then you wind up your attachment to creative elements. And the yogis are good at this. And they can, they can amalgamate the sense of, the sense of smell into the sense of uh, taste and then sight and touch and then ultimately uh, uh, space or, and so through this process of um, nati nati, one comes to the understanding that beyond this 24 elements, there is a, an energy that is the source of these 24 elements. And sometimes they consider the 25th element is the super soul. Uh, so Sad Kapila taught this in a very systematic way and built a system of knowledge based on these principles, which ultimately lead to bhakti. bhakti. Of course, Kapila's teachings about devotional service in the Srimad Bhagavatam center around the principles of bhakti. And uh, he gave these teachings to his mother, Devahuti. He was the only son of his mother. She also had nine daughters from Kapila Muni. I mean, from Kardama Muni, not Kapila. Kardama Muni was the father. He left home and he left her with a son, but the son was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kapila Dev, in his incarnation form. And he taught her the whole science of bhakti. And uh, she was great, greatly fortunate to hear this knowledge coming from her own son. And uh, that is the basis of the teachings in the third canto from chapter well, you've chapter 25 onward till chapter 31. And the Kapila's teachings. 
And uh, so if we read and study this, we can get an indication. Chapter 26 is a very scientific presentation of the interaction of the elements which, which act in certain ways as to produce material phenomena. For instance, uh, sound traveling through ether has been captured by the materialists in the form of waves. And by, by using electronic devices, they catch the waves and they, and they uh, transmit those waves in the form of radio or various types of communication devices. And they've also been able to manifest pictures through the, and those pictures also come in the form of what we know as, you know, com our computer screens and uh, the televisions like that. So this science uh, is very nicely explained in the um, 26th chapter. If you read that chapter, it's very scientific. If you have a scientific acumen and you're inclined to that kind of knowledge, read and really carefully understand that 26th chapter along with Trio Pablo's purpose because it goes deep into this, this whole philosophical basis. Um, here it says the etymological root meaning is that which explains very clearly, lucidly, by analysis of the material elements. Uh, outside of the material energy, there is nothing within this material world uh, the material energy consists of three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, and the interaction of the different modes with the living entity's desire and activities produces various types of results based on uh, the mode of goodness, which means good results or pious results, mode of passion, mixed pious and impious, and the mode of ignorance, completely impious. So um, by uh, the, the this metaphysics is that the scientists, especially Western science, they study the interaction of the different elements and they use different machines to try to understand how these elements are interacting in different, with different other forms of elements like that. But this interaction is also all going on naturally by the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is producing the living entities in the form of the bodies of the living entities. It doesn't produce the living entities. The living entities are coming from God themselves, but it produces the body. And so one should study this very carefully and get an industry. There was another person whose name was Kapila Dev also. Uh, he came after the original Kapila Dev. He claims he is the original Kapila Dev, uh, but he is just uh, an imitation bogus guru. Uh, people like him also because there's no bhakti in his teachings. He's an atheist. So he's teaching it simply from the metaphysical point of view and not from the devotional point of view. But he's really quite good at it. Nipuri has a large following. So uh, yeah, Kapila Day, we should carefully read about his pastimes in the third canto. Uh, when Kardama Muni, he wanted to give his wife a son and then leave everything. He wasn't inclined to household life. Uh, it, it seems like he wanted a wife at a certain point in his life and Krishna arranged for him to get a very qualified right wife, the daughter of the Aman, uh, Swayambhuva Manu, who was a pure princess who grew up, who grew up in a very uh, Kshatriya and a very devotional family. 
the, the Manus are Kshatriyas and they rule at a certain time. But they are also uh, great devotees of the Lord. Hmm. So, any comments or questions? Today we were traveling all day and we just arrived. So we're a little bit uh, uh, worn out from today's activities, a little tired, but if there's some questions, we can field questions, not only on this particular topic, but on any topic related to devotional service. So devotees can think of some questions and then we can start a discussion based on the questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, as Guru Maharaj mentioned, if you have any questions related to today's topic or maybe in general, or you would like to share any comments or realization, please unmute yourself. Uh, you can raise your hand or you can type in chat window. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Devi Mataji, you have raised your hand. Please go ahead. Thank you, Prabhu. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Dev. Um, I definitely would like some guidance on this uh, particular uh, third canto because I have tried reading about the material elements and it's so technical and it's so complicated and it's so convoluted that I just gave up. It's too difficult to understand for me at this point. And I was wondering... Is it really important to understand it in depth for our devotional service? Is it important? Yeah, it's nice to know it, but not necessarily. He should give you, he should have a, uh, an acquaintance. He should be somewhat be acquainted with the philosophy. Hmm. So just a working knowledge or just like what the Bhagavad Gita also describes, you know, five working senses, knowledge acquiring senses, sense objects. So just at least a basic idea one must have, even if one doesn't know it in depth. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, okay. So that's, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Yeah, just, just in... Uh, general understanding okay thank you that would be nice mm -hmm. thank you if you systematically read the bhagavatam you can come across these different sections and then you can uh, also get references from the acharyas uh, who give commentaries on each of the verses vishwanath chakravarti Thakur gives commentaries on the entire bhagavatam Sorry, do you think that when Srila Prabhupada's purports are so <laughs> lengthy and in-depth and hard to understand, do you think we can go there uh, to further read about the commentaries of the Acharyas? Yeah. I see. Because they break it down. A lot of times they break it down and explain it very, very easily to understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's helpful. 
คือสุขริคิชนะกุรุมาราชวัยลดีบุตรีถามขอให้คุณถามคำถามฉันมีสองคำถามกุรุมาราชวันนี้คาร์ดามุมุนีที่มีชื่อเสียงที่ดีที่สุดและเขาทำการอุทธรณ์ในประวัติศาสตร์มาหลายพันปีขอให้พระเจ้าช่วยพระเจ้าทำให้เขาได้รับสิ่งที่เขาต้องการในการแต่งงานนี้เป็นสิ่งที่เล็กน้อยสำหรับเขา It's a good question. To bring out certain philosophical points, I think, and also to uh, he came in order to bring about the presence of the supreme personality of Godhead, who would teach Sankhya philosophy. So, um, yeah, he played a role. In ushering in Kapila Dev, which in his teachings are actually very, you know, they they are some of them are pure bhakti and some of them lead to pure bhakti. So we should take this Guru Maharaj as a Lord's Leela, like that's why he just enacted like that. It's his lila, but he, um, when he has his lila, he also does uh, it does a service to to the human race. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hey. Raj Prabhu, you have question. Please go ahead. Thank you, Prabhu. Let's please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to the devotees. I have a question on uh, something you said in uh, a recent interview. You said uh, that you said that we are privileged to be able to chant. And in another class, last I think it was last week, that you said that everyone is eligible. Chant. So I wonder if you could clarify me because I got a bit confused between the two. Can you repeat that question? I missed something in the in, in the point. Sorry. Uh, in an interview that you did recently, you said that we are privileged to be able to chant. And in another yeah. class recently, you said that everyone is eligible to chant. Yeah, that, that privilege has been given by Lord Caitanya. <laughs> okay, he's made everybody. Uh, he, he's made everyone. Uh, in other words, one doesn't have to have any preliminary characteristics, qualities, or. Abilities. Anyone can chant any time, any place. That's his mercy, mm. and that's you can call that privilege. Same thing. He's shown special mercy. I see. So are there other people in other planets that are unable to chant because he hasn't given them that mercy? As though those who are deaf, they can't hear. They've been condemned because they can't hear the sound of the holy name. But even like, even they, even they chant sometimes. Mm.
Thank you, Maharaj. Hari, Hari, Hari. Madhavi Naudini. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Akhar is to Srila Prabhupada and Allah Agra is to you. Uh, you mentioned uh, the three modes of nature, and I would have the question that sometimes I hear about uh, Shuddha Sattva, and uh, is it material or is it transcendental? What is actually Shuddha Sattva? It's, it's pure goodness, it's transcendental. Oh, it's I see. A, it's, it's, it's devotional service. Mm, okay, uh, it's it's clear now. Uh, the confusion came from uh, I've heard the class from Radhanath Maharaj, and uh, he mentioned that all the time the the modes are mixed in the material world. So I didn't know if it means just the, that the material mode of goodness in a pure state. I mean, uh, not mixed with others, or if it's transcendental. But now it's clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's transcendental when it's pure. Your goodness is devotional service. But even goodness in this world is always mixed with something. To find pure goodness is practically not possible in Kali Yuga. Well, yeah, devotional service is pure goodness. Thank you very much. I mean, they're, they're acting in the, uh, on the platform of goodness, but they're engaged, engaging all these qualities in devotional service. That is transcendental as Sudha mm -hmm. Thank you. Rio. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, how, as a grihastha and as a devotee, how much should we concentrate on Swadharma and how much should we concentrate on Sanatana Dharma? And concentrate on Sanatana Dharma. Mm there's no nothing says there's no scriptural reference that says we should concentrate on swadharma so dharma you just spend a little time to figure out what your swadharma is and then your focus is on sanatan dharma that's all but swadharma is usually understood through the process of bhakti by the mercy of the spiritual master Don't worry about your swadharma. Devotional service is transcendental. Okay, Maharaj. So we should understand that uh, as a devotee, if you're practicing Krishna consciousness, our swadharma is uh, by default taken care of. Is it like that? Yeah, autom yeah automatically, yeah. But if you know your swadharma, and you can, and then you can engage in devotional service accordingly. That's what Dharma means. Your material tendencies. That's all it is. Material nature. Dovetailing or engaging your material nature into Krishna consciousness helps to purify the soul and brings about. Um, brings about a uh, realization of Krishna consciousness. But even if you're not engaged according to your Swadharma, devotional service is transcendental. It's above Swadharma. But Srila Prabhupada wanted to, to establish Vanarshram Dharma. And so part of that is 
uh, evaluating the individual swadharma and then learning how to engage that in devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. I think I got, got the answer. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Anything else? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, there is one question in the chat. Is Sudha Sattva, com is Sudha Sattva a combination of? Krishna's potencies, Sandini, Haladini, and Sambit. Um... No, that is part of Sudhusattva. I don't think it's um, that one. That's a little technical in the sense that these are the three internal energies of the Lord. And Ladini is it's his internal energy by which he enjoys transcendental pleasure. Samvit is that not that energy which by he knows all living entities, and Sandini is that potency by which everything is uh, it's, it's his existence potency. And these are potencies of the supreme personality of Godhead. So the sattva is, is transcendental goodness. That's what it is. Does Sudha sattva contain these three? I would say, yeah. Sudha sattva is devotional service, so it's more more connected to the living entity than it is to Krishna. But it's part of Krishna's internal energy. Okay. So Guru Maharaj, we don't have any other questions now. Okay, uh, so we'll be here tomorrow. Um, soon we'll start a series of verses on a particular topic. I think we're going to start that uh, soon after a few days. We'll be just doing some random verses. On Friday, we'll do um, Thursday. We have a class with the devotees from Charlotte. On Friday, we'll do a class on health um, because uh, it's a good time to explore that topic a little bit deeper, the health topic, especially this time of year. And uh, we'll also do one class maybe on Saturday, the Holy Name. Okay, that's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then we'll move into a series of verses after that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very, very much. Shila Prabhupada. Yeah, a little apologize. Tired today. As soon as you, as soon as you sit down and everything relaxes and you fart, start to get sleepy. We've been traveling all day and we just arrived. Okay, so we'll see you all tomorrow. 
थैंक यू गुरु महाराज शिल प्रभु पाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय जय थैंक यू गुरु महाराज थैंक यू सो मच गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू सो मच गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा गुरु महाराज थैंक यू महाराज हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा